Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the uh, Z95 Headhunter expansion pack from the X-Wing Miniatures game first edition. And I looked this up. This is from Wave 4, which was released in June of 2014. Now, it had been nine months since uh, Wave 3 had been released. There had been a, a few products released in the interim. Those two huge ships, the uh, Rebel Transport and the Blockade Runner, and also the Imperial Aces expansion set. But I'm sure at the time, players were, were hungry for new ships to play with, so this was probably a welcome addition to the game. And let's, uh, as always, we'll look at the ship model first. And at first glance, you might look at that and say, well, that's just an X-Wing. Well, no, it's not. Now, we've transcended all the ships that appeared in the original Star Wars trilogy. We've seen them all. Uh, those were all released through Ways 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so now we're moving into what then was the expanded universe. I believe now it's called Legends, since Disney took over Star Wars. Um, but this ship, as far as I know, made its first appearance in the old X-Wing and TIE Fighter games back in the uh, late 90s on PC. Um, you'll notice this ship does not have four laser cannons, but only two. This uh, was the precursor to the uh, X-Wing. In fact, uh, I think in the uh, prequel trilogy, they retconned the Z-95 further back, and, and there's a ship in the second edition uh, Galactic Republic uh, ships called the Z-95. It looks nothing like this, though. It's much, much larger, bulkier affair, so maybe this was a modified version of that later on. still has four engines, but only two uh, cannons, laser cannons, so as you might guess, it does have less firepower uh, than an X-Wing. I think uh, this is a neat little ship model. For some reason, I have two of these, and I think the reason for that is because that big lot I purchased off of Facebook Marketplace probably had one of these in it, but not the cards or the uh, any of the cardboard you see on the table here, so I was compelled to uh, find a, a, an expansion pack. And golly, I didn't pay much for this at all. I mean, this one, at the time of this filming, uh, the last time I checked anyway, it was very, very cheap the first edition version of this on the secondary market, so it's a pretty good value. And it's a neat little ship model, good paint applications on it. And again, yeah, it does kind of look like an X-Wing, but as you can see, it only has two cannons, okay? So, now in order to understand the capabilities of the ship, we need to compare it with both an X-Wing and a TIE Fighter. So here is one of the uh, uh, ship tokens. Uh, we, we ignore the skill level at this point. A Z-95 Headhunter... Uh, the actions it can use are focus and um, target lock, the same as an X-Wing. And it has two attack, two evade or agility, two hull, and two shields, making this a perfectly average ship. Well, let's compare that to the X-Wing. Well, again, don't look at the orange number. That's, pl that's pilot skill. X-Wing has three damage or three attack dice, one more than the Z-95. Two agility, the same as a Z-95, three hull, that's one more than a Z-95, and two uh, deflector shields, that's the same as a Z-95. Now, for comparison, I've also got a TIE Fighter uh, ship token out here. Ignore the orange number. A TIE Fighter has the same firepower. This is natively, before any upgrades, okay, as the Z-95. It has more agility, so it's more maneuverable than a Z-95. It has more hull than the Z-95 but no deflector shield. So there is a balance of power here uh, if you want to look at it that way. The Z95, um, as you, we'll look at just one or two of these. Yeah, very, very low squadron point totals on the cards. This uh, Bandit Squadron Pilot, which is a no-name filler card, only has 12 uh, squadron points. I believe that's the same as a no-name, like the Academy Pilot TIE Fighter Pilot, I think. However, this does allow you one missile upgrade, so you can uh, load this thing up with missiles. So that does give it sort of an edge. The shields and the missile capabilities does give it a slight edge uh, over the TIE Fighter. And it comes with two uh, reference cards, and we've seen both of these. Uh, modifications and titles. Uh, we already know what both of you can have one modification card on each ship and one title card on each ship if it qualifies for it, okay? For example, you can put the Millennium Falcon title card on a YT-1300, but not on an X-Wing, obviously, okay? And the Ion token card, uh, we uh, it comes with two Ion tokens. One of it's uh, one of the new weapons 
uh, one of the new secondary weapons uh, ionizes an enemy. So it they included the rules for the ion token for this as well. It's it's a really cool effect. It it and but there's a sort of a vagarity in something that I I haven't had time to look up. We'll talk about. Uh, the ion token causes a ship to not be able to do anything except go one short maneuver straight ahead. Uh, that could cause it to smash into another ship or into an asteroid. It, it, if you use it with some strategy in mind, uh, you can use it to great effect. Okay, so uh, we'll look at the pilot cards in a moment. This thing comes with uh, technically four ship tokens. It's just two, but they are double-sided with different pilots. Uh, on both sides, okay? And I, since I purchased this one retail, I happen to have this, which will allow us to see all its different maneuvers without twirling the maneuver dial. As you can see there, it's only got one option for a K-turn, and that's three. And so it's a little limited compared to some of the other ships. The green maneuvers are one straight ahead, and the two straight ahead, bank two, to the left or right. Those are the green maneuvers to shake, to, you know, to counteract any stress on the ship. Otherwise, it can only go, it can't go, it, it's not as fast. It can't move as much distance as a TIE fighter. So, uh, but it has some, some lower, some smaller maneuvers that it could do, okay? All right, let's start to look at the uh, pilot cards, and I think I've got these in descending order of skill. We start with Aaron Kraken, and I think that's a name we'll see again later. Now, look at this, a skill level of 8. So that's on par with Luke Skywalker as far as skill level. Um, first of all, we can see it's worth 19 squadron points. You can load an elite skill on it and missiles. So that, that's not bad, okay? Here's the uh, effect. After you perform an attack, you may choose another friendly ship at range 1. That ship may perform one free action. Now, that, this isn't contingent upon the attack actually hitting. After you perform your attack, another ship can perform a free action within range one. Okay, it has a limiting uh, stipulation to it, but that ain't bad. I, I think that's pretty strong for, uh, for such a, a low squadron point cost. Okay, next we have Lieutenant Blunt and skill level of six. 17 squadron points, same upgrade capabilities. When attacking, the defender is hit when when attacking, the defender is hit by your attack even if he does not suffer any damage. Now the first time I read this, I was like, mm -hmm. but I think I understand what that means. There are a lot of upgrade cards and abilities on pilot card that are contingent upon a hit. Okay? But even if the hit does zero damage, if Lieutenant Blunt uh, even if all the damage is counted out, the defender is hit by the attack, regardless of any actual damage. I hope I... Yeah, I believe I ex described that properly. And that will matter sometimes in the game. Now, I don't have any examples in front of me. I don't know that we, if we've even seen any examples. Uh, but what I just said makes pretty pretty good sense. Um, this, is a, this is a bonus. It's sort of a... a, a, a very uh, specific bonus. You have to uh, have uh, some cards in play that rely upon hitting uh, the opponent before this would kick in, okay? So those are the two named pilots that come with this. Of course, you can only have one of each of those in a squadron because they have names. Now here is the Tala squadron pilot. This is a generic pilot, no special abilities, four skill level, can only load uh, missiles, okay? One bank of missiles, and it's worth 13 squadron points and skill level of four. That's all there is to say about that. And then we've already had a look at the uh, bright squadron or the bandit squadron pilot. Uh, 12 squadron points total can, can load one missile. And I think cluster missiles would work really well on these Z95s. It doesn't come with cluster missiles, but I think cluster missiles would be a fine uh, use for those on these. That gives you two chances of attack. It's not, it's not a huge amount of damage, but. You get two opportunities. I mean, you could do up to, I think, six damage with cluster missiles. If I don't have one, the card in front of me to make certain that's a, or make sure that's a correct. But that seems right. Okay, so those are the pilot cards. Now, before we look at the um, upgrade cards, the Z95 expansion pack comes with one set of target lock tokens, two deflector shields to correspond with its ability to have two deflector shields. You could add a third shield if you use the uh, shield upgrade modification. 
so, so it would have three. Uh, or you could use a hull mod, uh, uh, a hull upgrade as well to give it three hull rather than two hull. Uh, those both great cards for a Z95, in my opinion. Uh, two ion tokens for this uh, ion pulse missile. One stress token, one critical hit token. And you may have noticed in my gameplay, I often forget to put the critical hit tokens down next to ships. And part of the reason for that is there's already there's already so many tokens in orbit around these ships, it can get confusing the more you add. And one focus token. And we get more of these double-sided number tokens to put on the uh, bases as well as next to their cards on the table. Uh, we're now up to number 35 and 36, and this does get ridiculous. I think this goes up into the 60s or 70s uh, by the time we get to the end of the first edition, but you'd never have that many ships on the table, or at least I've never seen that many on the table. Okay, now, upgrade. We're going to start with a new uh, modification card. I, I know for certain we haven't seen this before. Munitions Failsafe. When attacking with a secondary weapon that instructs you to discard it to perform the attack, do not discard it unless the attack hits. I like this card a lot. This is great for missiles or proton or torpedoes or any secondary weapon. Uh, there, there are some ships that I've run in some previous duels or matches uh, that I would have loved to have had this card on. Now I'm happy to have this out of the shoebox and, and have it in the stack so in the future if I want to run it, I've got it. Uh, that's a good card. And it's only one squadron point. That's This gives you two chances to fire off those cluster missiles or those concussion missiles or whatever you're using or the advanced proton torpedoes on the B-Wing. That would be a great ship to put this on. It's also great on the uh, Z-95, okay? Now we have a new... a couple of new Elite upgrades. And Elite, I just mean, has this metal on the back of the card, Okay. Wingman, for two squadron points, at the start of the combat phase, remove one stress token from another friendly ship at range one. If you're flying in formation, which takes a lot of practice to figure out how to maneuver without uh, hitting, without crashing into each other, uh, if you're doing that, this is a great card, and it's worth two squadron points, and uh, I can think of worse cards to use, okay? Next is Decoy, another elite upgrade that we've not seen before. Worth two squadron points. At the start of the combat phase, you may choose one friendly ship at range one to two. Exchange your pilot skill with that ship's pilot skill until the end of the phase. Now, there's two different ways you could use this. Uh, you could, um, uh, you could, uh, you could. Sw if you're using a, a low skill pilot, you could swap this with someone like Luke Skywalker, or Han Solo, or Dash Rendar. Yeah, Dash Rendar, someone like that. Have we seen him yet? No, we haven't. Kyle Katarn is who I mean. And, and be able to attack first. Uh, or alternately, if uh, a low... If, if you're running this on one of those high-skilled uh, pilots, uh, a lower-skilled pilot that is in prime position to uh, possibly destroy uh, a threat uh, it's still like a TIE bomber that still has its full payload, uh, but one hit would destroy it. Uh, you might use this to swap out your high skill with a, uh, a closer ship's lower skill to let it take the shot and, and take out the TIE Bomber before it can do any more damage. So strategically, this is a pretty good card, all right? Next, we've got a couple of new missiles, which makes sense with the Z-95, which, uh, well, no, I take that back. Assault missiles I don't think is new. I think we've seen assault missiles before. Uh, let's see. This requires a target lock. Does You roll four attack dice, range two to three, five squadron points. Spin your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack. Unless you're running munitions fail safe. And if it misses, you don't have to discard it. If it hits, you would still discard it. If this attack hits, each other ship at range one of the defenders suffers one damage. Now, here's why I don't like that. That means friend or foe. So it's kind of a dangerous missile to use. You could hurt your own ships with this thing. Okay, uh, the the new uh, missile upgrade is Ion Pulse Missiles, and this is why it comes with Ion Tokens and that Ion Token card. Requires a target lock, three attack dice, range two to three, discard this card to perform the attack, unless it misses if you're running munitions failsafe, okay? If this attack hits, the defender suffers one damage, only one damage, and receives two Ion Tokens. Then cancel all dice results. 
Okay, that includes the extra hits from this that you might have got. So, now here's the thing. This is more beneficial for a larger ship that needs more ion tokens to actually disable it, okay? Uh, I probably wouldn't use this on a TIE Fighter uh, or on a Z-95 because you only need one ion token to disable it, and to, you know, to make it... A, to, to, to hose its next maneuver phase to be able to only go one straight ahead, okay? Uh, but for a large ship, or even a huge... Well, I don't think... I don't think ion... If I remember right, ion tokens don't have an effect on huge ships unless it's a massive number of them. Uh, but on, like, the... The the, uh, the Fire Spray or the Millennium Falcon so and the Lambda Shuttle that require larger amounts of ion tokens to actually ionize it... Uh, this would be good, okay? So those are all the uh, cards that come with the Z95 Headhunter expansion pack. Now, when would I use the Z95? Well, in the same scenario, I'd use a TIE Fighter at this stage. If uh, I'm, I'm trying to build a specific number of squadron points, uh, but I'm short, uh, let's see what we could do for... For 15 squadron points, I could run Bandit Squadron Pilot and the Ion Pulse Missiles. Well, of course, then you want to factor in the, the modification, munitions, fail. There we go. 16 squadron points. Um, there's a, a pretty cheap addition. That's It's not terrible. I mean, it's on par with TIE Fighters. I mean, if you're just going to run Z-95s in a squadron, you're going to need a bunch of them. Like, you're swarming just like the TIE Fighters, in order for those to be effective. So that's when I'd use it. If, if I was strapped for uh, you know, 15 to 20 more squadron points and an A-wing is too, uh, not enough squadron points for an A-wing and certainly not enough for an X-wing, even one of the scrub pilots, I'd probably opt for the Z-95 head, uh, Headhunter. And uh, it's all about teamwork with the Z-95. It, and most of these cards require on another ship being within range 1, in order to get the, the 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 most bang for your buck on the squadron points, so that's just something to consider. It's not a terrible ship. I I think this is. I better be careful what I say here because I know one of my viewers absolutely loves the Imperial Aces uh, uh, expansion pack. Uh, I'd be happier running this ship than uh, one of those. Uh, Royal Guard interceptors without some more upgrades that we don't yet possess. Now. I'd be happy to run munitions fail-safe on one of the Royal Guard interceptors for certain. And uh, maybe even those uh, ion pulse missiles if I'm going against the Millennium Falcon or... Well, at that's, this stage, that's it. Now, the Outrider is coming, so that'd be another one that the ion pulse missiles would be great on. But that's, uh, I think, at the tail end of Wave 4, you get a couple of big ships, the Outrider, the YT-2400, and the, uh, the, the Imperial Decimator. Looking forward to those. But... Um, this is a, a nice precursor to Wave 4, which I think is pretty good. we got some neat ships in, in coming in. The next time, we'll have a look at the Tide Defender, which I think everyone's going to dig. Okay? Thank you so much for watching, pals. May the Force be with you, and I'll talk to you again real soon.